Hi everyone, welcome back to yet another interesting session here at Pulse. Today we have a very special guest with us who's definitely no stranger to a Sri Lankan, especially because for the past few months she's been a bit of a buzzing topic as well. Here with us is the first female group CEO of a conglomerate in Sri Lanka. We have here with us Kasturi Shalaraja Wilson. She is the first group CEO which, who was recently appointed for Hemas Holdings as well. And in addition to that, she was also recently appointed as a council member for the National Sports Council in Sri Lanka as well. Hi Kasturi, thank you so much for taking time off from your hectic schedule um, to be here with us. Thanks and it's a pleasure to be here and, and have this conversation. Um, yeah, you're right, it's been, I've been splashed a bit around <laughs> India, which is really a bit um, awkward. Yes, yes. So let's start off um, with a bit of history. Tell us a bit about your humble beginnings and where it all started. Uh, so where it all started is, I'm going to say, it's where it started as where Kasturi as a person. Uh, that's more what I'm proud of, who I am, uh, versus what I've achieved. Uh, I was born to a family, um, uh, middle class family, and uh, I have a sister and me. And uh, it was, we were brought up in a background of a lot of outdoor playing and uh, um, games like pit to outside, right. and uh, it was more outside versus inside. And uh, of course, when I was about five or six years old, my dad stopped working. So it was a household where you have a strong mom who does three jobs. Yeah. So that made me also understand the sacrifices and, and how much of hard work she did to, to bring up two daughters. Um, I went to Holy Family Convent, so it's a convent bred girl lady. Yes. Uh, so you have these nuns who teach us that you have to be fearful of the Ten Commandments. I'm a Catholic, uh, so we were very disciplined, religious, uh, um, so your faith starts from there. Uh, in school, I did a lot of sports. I was not a typical uh, academic, but I did decently well. I didn't, um, I didn't drop low behind in the class. I was within the top three or four in class always. Then I wanted to become a mom very early on. So again, it's, that's who I am. So I wanted, I guess, if the psychiatric gets into my head, maybe it's a lot of love to give. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but I wanted to become a mom. And I had two kids with my age of um, 25 plus. I was a mother of two. Um, and I chose not to do full-time work, mm -hmm. so that was drawn off on the fact that that was more important yeah. to me, being a mother than working. Uh, so again, that's the person you see. Yeah. But I guess I was always a driven person. I was competitive, so you can see even when I was not academically focused, I wouldn't like to be dropping more than yeah. the third position and stuff like that. Um, and at 29, I, I became a single mom, which lot of, there are a lot of single moms there, it's nothing unique. But for me, the inflection is that drove me, changed the way I worked or thought. Uh, it gave me a purpose of doing, choosing a career for the life I wanted for my kids. Um, which that was a turning point and that's who I am now as well that's that that changed and gave me a trajectory into career um, did I look at it and enter that thinking that I want a title of this no definitely not I think my bosses who were with me would have this conversation custody what do you aspire to be after this and it's always no I want to be happy doing what I'm exactly. doing now right. so that was never a conversation but I guess I was, I used my talent, I uh, made sure that I did well at my job, but I, the biggest pride was uh, I could also be a mom for my kids and bring up two absolutely amazing human beings. So that's who I am, I, I love to, now for me, that's a person with all those different experiences and moments and inflection points, you have the person you see now. Exactly, well, that's very interesting. So talking a bit about, you know, your experience, especially with sports, how has that experience helped you excel in your corporate world? So if I draw back on my life and what I, I use today, my, some of my strengths as a leader is what I learned there at a sports field. First thing is, if you are a sportsman, whether you're a team sports or individual, it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of sacrifices. It's a sacrifice you do, your parents do, your family members do because they want you to exceed, uh, excel. So you do get up every day, repeated. You don't become excellent overnight. So it's consistently doing what 
you know what you have to do to do well. So if it meant that, um, so one responsibility I had in the team was to make sure the shot went in when it was given to me. So I would have to take some thousand shots and if I had to do it every day, I'd do it every day. During the interval I would shoot, before practice I would shoot and you have to tick that block, box. So 999 is not okay, thousand is what you do. So that's the first thing, the discipline, hard work, commitment and support from everybody. You can never do it alone. Uh, second one is that you appreciate that there are different talented people, when you, especially on a team sport, right? You can't, you're good, right? But that doesn't mean you have to hold it on your head exactly. and say, I am excellent. Uh, everybody, the next person has to be good in her, his or her role so that you can collaborate together. You bring, exactly. it's two plus two is equal to five kind of story. Um, so you need to appreciate and I think what I learned most is you need to encourage them to be their best self. And exactly. if they are that and you succeed, you all celebrate together. So that teaching is, and it happens, you don't have to even push people, teams work together. Uh, but translating that to the corporate is very tough to teach because it's about your recognition, your career progress, right? Versus if you put this, instill this um, sports thesis or ethos here, I guess, I guess the corporates would find it much easier. But having said that, I see the younger generation adapting that a lot. So that's the second one, mm -hmm. how you can work together and you appreciate the skill sets to, to uh, complement each other. Third one is you integrate with people from different walks of life. You have people from different races, creeds, uh, social standing, but we learn to support each other. We learn to uh, work together, look beyond those uh, outer th um, the things you see and value friendships and I mean some of my longest friendships are what I've made on the, on the field. Uh, whether it's school or whether it's a national team, we still connect yeah. and when we connect we would talk in a language everybody's comfortable with. Yeah. We do not even uh, make anybody feel, uh, belittle somebody mm -hmm. and that's the same thing. Um, so I mean I remember when I used to go on tours, my mom couldn't afford, I mean it was a luxury to even to go on a tour. Yeah. My mother was just earning not enough to give me any pocket money. In fact, she would pawn these two, I wear these bangles because of that. She would pawn the set of bangles and give me $50. So that $50 is really precious to take through two, three weeks. But towards the end, I would have run short of money and there would be, there was a girl who, well, a couple of people who had excess money. They would buy me meals. And I still, up to date, I don't forget that. I mean, there were people and they never made, made me feel for one moment like I, they didn't give me sympathy, it was just like it was natural, yes, you give exactly. that. So that's something I learned from the, um, the sports field is the, how you have to be humble. So are these values which you were talking about, is that what leadership means to you? Is that what it means? Leadership, for me, leadership is not standing out there and saying it's a title. It is how I can get people, it's some of that, people to be the best versions they could be. Uh, to watch other people, teams succeed and achieve um, um, achieve outcome and I think the most important thing to shape kind of the trajectory of the future which others can't see and guide them to achieve it and leave a sustained outcome where it's beyond you, you leave it still there. Um, so I guess that's it, it's just leaving some kind of shaping people to be better, giving them opportunities and making the best out, getting the best out of them. Right. Yeah, that's very interesting. So when we talk about um, the workforce, especially here in Sri Lanka, as a successful businesswoman, how could you tell, uh, like what, what, would you, what do you feel is the best way that organizations can really advocate change to empower young women within the workforce to really excel in their careers? Um, so it's both ways. One is organization has to uh, change the culture, change the way we have the structures to support them. Uh, and the other side is I think the young women also have to take the empowerment and exactly. own it because um, sometimes they come from when they're brought up as a kid uh, they, they're brought up with the father either thinking protecting the daughter yeah you get a qualification but you know you don't need to aspire to be yeah. this right you have to get married and you know you're puta you're a girl no you don't have to do this which is normal conversation exactly. I wouldn't think that father would tell the son Puta, me, you don't have to have ambition, you stay at home. No, we all as a mom, even you want your sons to do well, but exactly. do you want your daughters to do that? Exactly. No. 
so they're coming up in a background of that so they also once they grow up and they want things for themselves i think they need to own it so i find what i see visibly visibly is they struggle to take that empowerment and own their space but with coaching and mentoring and and support from the company company which i have to we we'll talk about next is they would succeed uh, from a company perspective they need to be understanding that it's not equal at home for the young women especially young moms so we how do we make it more how do you support them so that it's equal for them in total uh in equal at home but when you add both together it's equality for, equal for them so we have to look at work from home techniques exactly. uh we look at flexi hours we look at them taking time off temporarily coming back in most importantly we have to have a culture which we had and at emas and i that's why i flourished towards uh, i i didn't apologize each time i had to say i'm a mom and i had to go back to go to pick up my son no is for any any parent any anybody who has an issue and even talent we have a culture that family has is important uh work is important but family also is really important because that's the core of your your life and if if anything is wrong with your family you're not happy exactly so that you have to bring your best version to work and solve it so that culture of leaving no room for people to say this person is not at home and because she's always constantly uh on leave because the child is sick does anybody stop and ask yeah but why doesn't the husband take a day off no so somehow we can't solve family problems but we can enable the person working with us it can even happen for the guy right anybody working with us we should make sure that they are we will love them to take time to make things work and in at home as well and what are your thoughts on the representation of women in senior management roles as well especially in sri lanka so in sri lanka look i i think people pave way for people like me even was i in the few and far between but there was a rohini nanayakara who was i remember reading about her there was a lady called rani jama she was all these were banks right but still predominantly very successful banks and successful women um but then do you have penny coming out of that panel no not yeah. many uh so you you have senior people uh, reno kafnando was there then generally i guess you find ceos uh but it's not coming as you're not having a second rung of talented women who are coming through so i guess we should do more to churn out um, more women leaders and give the chances of success a higher percentage exactly. of success so i guess that has to be done uh we've got the plus thing is we've got companies now who are accepting that it's it's not a gender thing but there are there are companies which accept its talent um then you have the other plus thing is that women also aspire to want a career exactly i i uh, i was one of those who were not aspiring and i don't think it is wise or what it is wise or not but that was who i was and now uh but i admire the young talent who come and say i want my career but i want to be able to have be a mom and not give up those joys of life um so those two are and uh, the culture is also changing so i guess the ingredients are there but it's up to us also to understand the uniqueness bring out your leadership uh just be yourself and figure out where you can mm-hmm. succeed right okay So on to a bit of a more personal question. So we've actually kind of we are currently in a society, a traditional society rather, where being a woman um requires you to, you know, when you think of being a woman, it's always about okay, either motherhood um or you know, like basically being that home home base. So how would you say you've actually been able to completely shatter those traditional um you know stereotypical beliefs that people place upon women. So tell us about your journey as a single mother and how you've been able to challenge these norms and adapt to the challenges that you faced. So you know necessity is a mother of invention, right? So <laughs> that's what happened to me. But you know uniquely when you said this I was thinking it's not a race or a caste or whatever exactly it is a sri lankans and that's our culture right and um, while we see with ev- with every generation the culture changing um predominantly this is it that we expect especially uh, it's still there in the rural folks that 
uh, it's a mother's job. And if you do a social experiment, you know that there is more participation. I must say there is more participation by fathers, but still it's limited to certain things, right? And I think with the next generation, if the mothers do well, teach their husbands, their sons well, you'll find sons who actually could support um, support the women. But I guess it's from us as well. When you give work, you kind of want you go through this period. What is what is a ideal mom? What what's the best version you can be? Uh, so you think best version is being there every minute of the day, versus. Uh, how can you influence your child to be a better human being, Ch choose moments. So you're, you have to decide that. And we as women, I, I can't see me, if I was a mother again, ever not wanting not to have those moments. You would. But you have a different support system. You have to have an ecosystem and a support system to make that more ena enable it. For me, what happened was that I needed to go out there and earn a living. I, I, you can't live without exactly. them. I had to provide for my yes. kids. And if that was a co, how do I make it work the way I know how to make it work? So it was getting support from my parents, my domestic. I mean, I must say, I, I had her for 20 odd years. She was a rock. I mean, she would knew, know the routine of the kids. Uh, she took a whole load of uh, problems off my table. Uh, but then I also didn't. I always acknowledged that I was a mother first, so I always had the license to go back whenever I wanted. Yeah. Um, and establishing that license very early on, I think, was my success. And um, and the fact that there was a company which also had the values of family is important. Um, and I guess all companies now will come to that, and I see lots of companies who have that value system. So that was it. I mean, accepting your circumstances, not wanting pity. I don't think I ever wanted PD uh, because this is your your life and your if it's your problem or if it's your circumstance you have to live exactly. it. You have to make it work for you. Um, and I keep saying, I tell my sons they get worried about stuff. I said, look, can you solve it? Is it something you can control? Then worry about it and solve it. If you can't control, don't worry about it because it's not going to take you anywhere. Uh, so that was it. So I just adapted. I was young enough to adapt. I had people around me who supported me for my friends to everybody support and system matters I guess yes, and being thing. truthful true exactly. for, to yourself you don't have to shy and be shy about it you don't have to lie and say that look I'm not a single mother that's my life so I mean yeah that's who right. I am that's very interesting and how have you been able to incorporate the life lessons that you've learned um, in your corporate life to your personal life and from your personal life to your professional life is there anything any sort of switch um, between the values that you've learned in both areas? <laughs> so, generally I don't like to take work home kind mm -hmm. of a thing, but right. uh, it's a, you're the first person who has asked this question, <laughs> okay? Uh, so for my personal life, what I bring to corporate is uh, the things, it's who I am and how I work yeah. and how I look at life. So I try to bring the lessons I have in terms of um, you do good, you're not supposed to harm people. Um, have lots of it and ethics should be high uh, family matters and always support be there for each other and support each other and it's not about you it's about the team or it's about the company as a whole um, so these are my personal values and help whenever you can help people so that doesn't mean that you get the company to pay I'm, I'm trying just to say that if somebody needs just galvanize around the person take over the person's work support them when they, if somebody's sick, in some ways, personally, just be people who care care about people. Um, getting getting corporate to work, uh, to the home or personal life. So there is a, for me, being a female leader, uh, when you're in a corporate, I, I sometimes I have to walk into meetings and I, I switch on my personality to lead it into a, like a leader into a, mode. Because no, I needed to establish, especially when the group is new, mm -hmm. You need to establish that you want things done, so you have a more assertive personality um, at some points because you need to get it done. So I would just say, no, I'm sorry, and, and get this thing done. Uh, but you're kind of, um, you don't need to take that home. So I was very mindful. I didn't want to take a uh, kind of a leadership personality home because I had two boys, and I was mindful that they needed to flourish and be their own persons without 
having a strong mother who would who would um, always override them exactly. or or try to preach to them like you know i've been there done that and try mm-hmm. to preach uh it's not easy uh, i had to allow them to make their own mistakes uh, i had to allow learn to have conversations very at a at a lower level with them so that i leave that per, that personality in office and walk into the with the went to home which i guess um it it actually has worked i mean i i struggled with it but i was very mindful that i wanted my sons to be their own and i didn't want to influence them and i didn't want to dominate them so i very early on i packed them out to malaysia the one reason was i said no i needed them to have their own dreams yeah, yeah their own experiences right. yeah and uh, and how i i how i relate to them and we are very close and they i mean they kind of boss me sometimes <laughs> most of the time so uh, yeah Okay, right. So that's very interesting. And what advice would you have to single mothers out there who are currently struggling? Um it could be financially or it could even be emotionally. What advice do you have to give them? Just because you're a single mother, uh don't think it's bad. I mean, uh that's your circumstance and uh, don't feel sorry for yourself because there are so many people couples who are married and they still feel they're single. So because uh, you don't get the support Uh, your circumstance is yours. Uh, without feeling sorry, just reach out for help. I mean, there are people who will help you as long as you open up and you tell them what you want. So, I had a, that's why I keep saying. I mean, I have friends who have helped me. I've been unable to. I mean, my son has been taken to hospital by my friends while I was stuck at a meeting. So. you have people who come yeah. up for you come up and stand and same way you should stand up for them and you know, help them as well um so it's it's there it's un funnily humanity um they come together when life you know is it's tough for somebody else and remember that there are good people out there and you would succeed take one day at a time you're not going to see uh, would i have known i'm going to be like this no you wouldn't see there's always light at the end of the tunnel and be the best person you can be in every day uh, your moments of what makes you happy will change i'm not saying you're going to be ha- un- uh, there are no not going to be sad moments there are moments you're really alone and you feel sad uh, and i i don't know whether it is a thing i would cry sometimes in in the bathroom yeah. i would just howl and yeah. cry and just when i come moments, out of yeah. come out that i'm okay and yeah. i think uh, count your blessings and you're okay so um, there's no recipe You know what at the end of it you come out of it. Um what message do you have to our viewers out there especially young women um who uh who who wish to thrive in whatever that they do. So what you have to do is you have to be passionate about what you do. Um you need to know what your special skill is. So I learned that very early or or somewhere in in the middle of my career is because I got feedback. and i kind of started thinking okay so that's what constantly they're saying you're good at of course they had a whole load of feedback what i was good not good at <laughs> and that was on the soft side yeah. i must say but uh, it tells you where you should pivot and move uh, it tells you how you should position yourself at each meeting because you have meetings and certain projects you're given how you could influence and those are your successes because you know what you're good at uh enhance or skill up on leadership because sometimes you um, it's not that you're not confident but you can get overpowered so there are meetings i know when there are formidable people who are uh, lack of a better word full of themselves i kind of sort up a lot with my vocabulary with the armory even with my way i stand and sit or whatever because that's your moment of establishing who you are um be confident own yourself you don't have to be somebody else be comfortable in your skin um i always say wear your skin very well because i have so many flaws and i'm like yeah it's there but i you, know, you wear your try flaws to, on your shoulders yeah, yeah. I, i try to curb it so that it's not too much in anybody's face <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's tough to get rid of certain habits um so that's it and uh, just re- remember if you are happy doing what you're doing and it's fulfilling you there'll be another door opening for you uh don't dream about what's the next door sometimes it will come up but as long as you're good at doing what you're doing so you know be pursue being excellent i i i think that's it and never stop learning i still learn i mean i'm 
this job I'm still reading I'm learning from others it's it's uh, life is death so simple simple things I mean just pursue what you what makes you happy sometimes what what uh, makes you happy in a term of a career is not necessarily something you're good at so for me accounting was something I was good at but I thought it was really boring mm -hmm. but it paid my bills and some and because I was I was good at it people would come and praise me mm -hmm. So that was kind of feeling fulfilled and successful. So um, figure out what you're good at. Uh, keep pursuing excellence every day. And just be comfortable in your own skin. Uh, in the process, how are you going to develop your leadership? And what I am as a leader is not what you're going to be. You Each have to figure out to own. Your, your own personal style, which would work for you. So one more question. What would you want to be remembered as? This is another first time having today. Um, okay, so for me, to the day I die or the day I retire, firstly, all these titles go off, right? If I could have helped somebody who didn't ask, couldn't have asked me, but I could help them to get a better life or in a time of need, and that that I changed their lives given opportunities where people could actually transform their future and just as a everybody I've, I mean who I could as maximum I ca as I can touch and impact lives positively so if I have impacted one person's human being's life and they remember that they are they, they remember me positively because of it that's fine it's not my title I don't think anybody remember my title when yeah. I'm not a great. That's very interesting. Um, so that brings us to an end with our conversation with Kasturi. Thank you so much, Kasturi, You're for welcome. taking time off your busy schedule. I know how busy <laughs> um, you've been. So thank you so much for taking You're time welcome. off to be here with us. It was an extremely inspirational um, interview. I'm pretty sure I'm speaking on behalf of all the viewers out there as well. You're an uh, inspiration to majority of... Uh, basically all of us um, here in Sri Lanka and even overseas, whoever's watching, I'm pretty sure they'll find something inspirational from this interview as well. So thank you very much and thank you for watching. Islandpulse.lk Now with two streams of unlimited music to suit your mood. Mood, 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 mood. Hey guys, thanks for watching. To keep up with the Pulse of Sri Lanka, you can subscribe to our channel here. To catch our latest videos, click here and here. Keep living.